morning here. Um, I've noticed that I've been getting some new traffic to my channel, so I just want to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Janae. I am a second grade teacher from Chicago. I have been teaching for three years, and today I'm going to take you guys on a day in the life. So I'm back from um, a substitute. I was in my classroom the last uh, Thursday and Friday, so it's a little junky in here, but that's expected i'm gonna get things situated one of the first things i do when i get to class if i have not already um prepared the week before which clearly i haven't because i was out um thursday and friday i usually make copies at home because i do have my own printer but i just make like one master copy of whatever i plan on doing in class and then when I, I try to get to school a little bit early so I can just go make copies from my master copies that I made at home. So I'm going to get those copies out now and then I'm going to take down the chairs and get set up for the day. sheets for the week I make a class copy of these it normally looks more like this um, but because it, it, it look, like goes through a scope and sequence but um, I don't have I didn't have the master copy book for the diphthong so I have to order that so I just made this on a Google Doc I'm gonna print out enough for the class this is their worksheet that they're gonna do today after we read our story um, this is for later in the week. I might make that later. Late, this is for later in the week as well. I may make those copies later. This is Bell. Oh, no, this is um, work for their centers. So I'm going to make, again, I just make one master copy of everything. This is their word work that they do at the word work center. So they're going to be building some AU and AW words since that's their skill this week. Um, some trace tracing up some stamping activities a writing activity and then here's their weekly bell work so monday they color their they get five sight words and five phonics words so the curriculum that i purchased or the resource that i purchased from teachers pay teachers is just for the sight words so on monday they color their sight words i tell them to take these home cut them out and use them as flashcards to study on tuesday they trace their words on Wednesday, they do a word search. Thursdays, they do boxes. And then on Fridays, they have a coloring sheet with their words in it, and it's like a code or a color key that they have to follow. So I'm gonna go make copies of this, their work for today, and their uh, center's work. So let's go. All right, so we know on Mondays we do our vocabulary routine where I introduce you to our vocabulary words, which can always be found on our words of the week. So we're going to get started with our context clues game. Remember, I'm going to give you a sentence with your word. You have to discuss with your group. What do you think the word means based on the context clues? You get points for your explanation and your ability to use context clues in the sentence not so much if it's right or wrong but if it makes sense based on the context clues i'll give you a point okay so what makes you think rapid means talking so the word talking is in the sentence so you think it would be saying the same thing twice Okay, got to use context clues a little bit better. Purple. You think it means what? Long. The mall. 
like a shopping mall. What what words in the sentence make you think rapid means mall? Hmm? That word is pace. My mom was talking at a rapid pace. Okay. So the word is in place. Does that change your answer? Okay, turquoise. Okay, makes sense. Uh, green. Speedy. What makes you think that? Oh, good. So you use the context clue pace. What does that make your brain think when you see that word? It makes my brain think like, like how fast it is. Going. Very good. How fast something is going is the pace. Excellent job, green table. Using those context clues. My homeroom went to lunch. They're gonna come back, get their stuff, and then go switch to math. And I'll have my switch class for about 30 minutes before they go to special. So for that 30 minutes, I usually do our phonics routine. So I'll try to show you guys a glimpse of that. All right, our phonics skill this week is A W. A W spells off. Repeat. Off. And. A U. A U also says off. Everybody say off. Off. Claw. Slide. D R. Sound it. Let's try that again. A W says what? Off. Off. Everybody say off. Off. Sound it again. Go. Somebody added an R in there. I heard drawer, but it's drop. Hey, you guys. So today is Tuesday. Um, I think I ended yesterday's vlog just showing you footage of the lessons. Um, I want to show you guys what we have been working on in writing. I meant to show you yesterday, but I'll just show you today. Um, what else? Uh, I'm on my lunch right now. I'm a little bit excited because I went to Panera this morning and I got me, you know, the you pick two. I got a Caesar salad and the avocado chipotle chicken melt sandwich. Let me know in the comment section if you ever have Panera, if you get that, that chipotle avocado chicken. So good. So I'm excited for lunch today. I usually eat my lunch on my prep. Sometimes I eat it during lunch, but um, the kids have recess in here when it's too cold out. So sometimes I don't have like enough time to eat my lunch the way that I truly want to enjoy it without scarfing it down. So I'll just wait till my prep because that's a full hour. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys what we did for writing today and what we're working on in small groups. All right, y'all, so this is the writing that we've been working on. Um, as we come up with this, I write it uh, with this technological pen and I just write it on the board as they come up with it. And then the next day I just have it already pre-filled, typed in. So today we were working on the conclusion because that's the only empty one. And we came up with a really good uh, con con conclusion. I'll show you one of the students' work. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we got it jam-packed. And I think we wrote a little on the back too, cause we were really, we were really getting down with the writing. And the way I conduct them is like, we've learned all these different pieces and what they entail and what makes, makes up a good body, what makes up a good introduction, what makes up a good conclusion. And then, so I just have them talk at their table groups and then we just share out and we kind of like just talk together like do we agree with that? Oh, what can we add on? Hmm, should we say that? Should we not? And we just write it, they help me write it together i mean they're coming up with the words but i'm just writing it for them up there while they also write it on their graphic organizer so now that we're done tomorrow we're going to write our final copy on um, on a nice neat sheet of writing paper hey youtube it is wednesday I'm trying to be consistent with my vlogging 
Um, the students are at lunch right now and I am preparing um, a little script for one of my second graders to read at the end of the day because it is Women's History Month. They've been having a different student from each class uh, every day go down and read something about a woman in history. So yesterday I had a girl read about um, Alberta Christine Williams, which the name might not be familiar to you unless I add her husband's last name. I'm sorry, her son's last name, King. Uh, she was the mother of Dr. Martin Luther King and not many people know who she was because she was, you know, she was a mother, but she raised a son who contributed like who changed the course of history, but yet we don't, her name is not as popular. Um, I just love people like that. Like I love humble people who just work the background and do things behind the scenes. They're not famous. They're not trying to get known. They're just doing the right thing and they make the largest impact. Um, and so today I'm gonna have a scholar read about Malala. And uh, yeah, so I'm preparing that script for her now. Uh, today we started writing our final copies in writing. We use this fancy paper. I'll show you some of their work in a little bit. And uh, yeah, and then we did things as normal. So all my students came back from lunch and they're all just like, you look like a teacher, you look like a teacher. I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, today you're dressed like a teacher. Am I dressed like a teacher because I have on a button up? I'm like, do I not look like a teacher on other days? They're like, no, today you just really look like a teacher. I was like, thanks. What's up y'all? So first of all, I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic because, okay, you guys know at the beginning of this vlog, I think I had just mentioned how I have two new students. They came in needing letter sound correspondence practice, literally like missing some letter sounds of the alphabet. Some of them couldn't even recognize letters. We're still working on that. We're still doing all that. I've been implementing um, this intervention program. I've been working with the students, doing these different activities with him. And today he did so good. He's doing so good. And I feel like it's like stirring up this passion in me to be like a reading interventionist or a reading specialist. Or like, I wanna work with babies at that foundational level because that's when their brains grow so quickly. And like, you can literally teach a three-year-old how to read at like a third, fourth grade level because their brains are sponges. So anyway, um, the kid is reading. The kid is reading. His brain is picking up things like a sponge. Yes, he still needs help with on certain words and you know things like that, but sometimes his brain will just tell himself that I didn't even know he knew. Like we were reading a, a book and he, he knew the words on. And I was like, how did you know that said on? He was like, I don't know. I was like, whoa. Okay, but anyway, I'm super excited about that. Still working with him, still in communication with the parents, sending things home sending things home for them to work on. Um, I pull him during a small group time during my homeroom class. He's actually not in my homeroom, but um, I don't have time to pull him in the afternoon because you know, I have my other groups and there's not necessarily a certain group that he fits into. So I have to make time for him. And since my homeroom class is mostly um, on grade level or above, I do have time to spare in regards to, you know, meeting with students who um, are more urgent. Like, you know, I need to work with them more so than I do the other students just because of where they are right now in the year. So I pull him during my homeroom time while my other groups are meeting with uh, at their other centers. I've also been having a lot of help during uh, my small group time with uh, my the Sika that's in here. He's been meeting with the group, which has really helped me. And then um, there's also another Sika who comes in in the afternoon to pull a group, which has really helped me. So in the afternoon, I have two people pulling groups, plus I'm pulling a group, plus my centers it has been extremely, extremely helpful. We are moving these kids. And when I say moving these kids, I'm in, I'm referencing like data so like we always go over like middle of the year data uh, into the beginning of the year data testing scores and it shows up as like a bar uh, a bar graph and like red is below far below yellow is below but you know not too far below green is on grade level blue is above so whenever I say move these kids I'm talking about move my red kids to at least just move them up 
whether they move from the red to the yellow, whether they're moving from the yellow to the green, that's what I mean. So if you hear me using that term, we gotta move these kids or we moving these kids, that's what I mean. We moving them from wherever they're at on that benchmark that's below, we're moving them up. So I'm super happy about that. Like I've never felt like, I'm not gonna say I've never felt that, but like I know that this is something I'm really passionate about because whenever I can assist a student in reading or I see them grow, like my heart literally lights up on fire. Like I feel like I just want a million dollars. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys what we did today for writing. We finished our final copy of our class narratives that we have been working on. I'm so proud of them. These kids wrote introduction, one, two, three body paragraphs and a conclusion. These kids wrote five paragraphs. They're seven. They're seven and eight. I'm super proud of them. I'm about to get ready to uh, put it on some colored paper over there on my desk so I can hang it up on their lockers for display because we're going to display this work. This is some good work. So I had just picked the kids up from specials and then a sub came in my room and was like, I'm supposed to sub for you for the next hour. And I was like, wait, what? Why? What's going on? Is there like an IEP meeting that I forgot about? But it's they're making up a missed prep because sometimes special teachers are out. And when that happens, we have to the teachers have to keep the kids for that hour. So then we have to fill out this sheet so that we can get our prep uh, made up because that was supposed to be our prep time. So I was like, this is mm -hmm. But yeah, guys, I'll probably end the vlog here. Um, thank you all for watching. I've noticed that I've gotten some new subscribers, some people, some teachers from all across. Um, and I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Welcome to my channel. And let's do this teacher journey together. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next vlog. Bye.